Hey, what's up guys? It's your friend Fast Eddie, and today I want to show you my technique for aging wood, distressing it, you know, making it that ultimate farmhouse look that everybody's looking for nowadays. I'm getting ready to make another coffee table, so I'll show you my process and how I like to do it. Period. Like I said, it's very easy, but there's a very effective way, and I'll show you at the end the uh, finish that I get out of it. <clears throat> now, first of all, let's show you what I use here, just your typical normal stuff here. I like to use the espresso color uh, stain, which I apply the stain first, and I'll show you all that here in a minute. But the espresso looks really good with the wood, with the uh, breaking through through the white paint, you know, to give it, like I said, that aged uh, look. So yeah, use the espresso. And then of course, just some cheap off the shelf uh, Walmart flat white paint. This is gonna be used for the top coat. And uh, you'll see what I mean by the uh, stain eating through the paint here, how I really like to make it look cheapo chip brushes once again I think these are 50 cents either from Walmart or a box store now I like to roll the paint on you don't have to you can get yourself another cheapo chip brush to do it with the uh, white paint as well but I just like to use one of these little four inch rollers and uh, roll the actual white paint on top but uh, enough talking let's get to it and I'll show you how it goes all right so let's get started with the stain here now we don't need like a very heavy coat this is a pretty dark stain and it uh, comes right through that white paint. Like I said, I'll show you in a little bit, but uh, taking my cheapo brush here and obviously just going to stain the wood. Um, nothing too special, dab it on. Like I said, this isn't the uh, uh, final finish, so we doesn't, it does not have to be perfect in this stage. One thing I also forgot to mention, you'll see my little drop cloth thing I have down here. <laughs> this is actually just a, uh, uh, a shower curtain from the dollar store. These are one buck a piece and they work perfect, man. I usually pick up two or three every time we go out, so I have plenty of uh, drop cloths. But uh, yeah, do yourself a favor, run up to the dollar store, man, and get some of these vinyl uh, drop cloths or shower curtains. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's get started here. Now when we go to wipe the stain off, uh, just loosely wipe it off. Um, we're going to leave this actually a little bit wet because like I said, for the uh, farmhouse look, uh, I want this to come start showing through the paint. So uh, I'm going to wipe it off obviously because if you don't wipe some of it off, then it just never ever dries. But go ahead and start wiping this off a little here. Like I said, just get the heavy stuff off. We're not going for 100% uh, complete dry here. Just the heavy stuff. And that should be the product right now that we're looking for. See how it's still a little bit shiny? That means there's uh, uh, just a little bit left on the top there, which is good for what we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these legs and the runners, and we'll get back to it. All right, guys, so everything has a nice, uh, generous coat of uh, stain on it. Now, you can see how these really dry pine legs really soak up that stain. These almost look like an ebony blackish color, but uh, they're that espresso. You can see the difference between this and the chunk of wood in the background. But uh, anyway, this is about perfect. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put this on with one of those little cheapo uh, brushes. Get our uh, white paint in here. I'll show you just real quick how I do in some of these uh, crevices. Just go ahead and take your brush. Plenty of paint on there. I usually start with the crevices first so I can, you know, go ahead and wipe it down. But yeah, just uh, get in there. This is easy stuff here. But just make sure, you know, you get a pretty decent coat on there. Because we're actually not going to let this paint dry up too much. When I first started making these tables and going for that, you know, uh, rustic farmhouse look, I was letting the paint dry too much. And when I went to sand it off, oh, it was a total pain, man. So, uh, like I said, just get some paint on here. And this does not have to be perfect, guys. But, decent. The hardest part about this is where to grab the, uh, the leg after you've already got one coat on there. And you don't want any runs. Runs are harder to sand than they look like crap. So there we go. Got it in the crevices here. And like I said, this is just the first coat. Depending on what this looks like when it dries, it might do uh, two coats. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead here and finish up the legs. Alright, so this is what we get after one coat. And you can probably see what uh, what I'm going for here. Now I am going to go ahead and put on another second coat of white paint. Very thin, quick uh, second coat here. And then while it's still a little bit tacky, the paint, then I'm going to go ahead and start wiping some of the paint off. And uh, you'll see what I mean. It comes out beautiful. It actually does look like old aged wood when I'm done. You can probably see the age on it now. but. Uh, it looks better with just a little bit more uh, uh, cover-up paint. So let's go ahead and put a second coat on, and then we'll come back and start a little bit of sanding. All right, so now we're back, and we have two coats of the uh, flat white paint on there, matte white, whatever. And uh, this is about what we have right here, guys. See, it's not perfect, and that's the way that I want it to be, not perfect. So uh, now we're really going to start the aging process. And what I like to use is just a few scrap pieces of some uh, 400 here, just to get into the tight spaces. And then I also have a sanding block. One side is fine, the other side is coarse, depending on uh, uh, the thickness of the paint in the certain areas. But now how I like to start it off is, remember it's got that dark brown stain underneath, so we don't want to push too hard. So I start off with the fine side, and I just rub on the corners. I mean the edges, sorry. Hopefully my camera is picking this up. Now you can see I was just barely taking some off to start right there on the corners and the edges. And once again, I'm on the fine side because I didn't let the paint set too long. See, once again, there it is. go you can see how it's starting to already look pretty good and I do it all around the edges first of all because that's what it really looks like and that's how it starts to age around the edges now there's one face but now I'm gonna go back and actually take some of this paint off on the inside too but I think you kind of get my drift here what I'm going for the kind of look that I'm going for I actually had to set up a little bit longer than I usually do so I'm going to try the coarse side on this one. There we go. Now that looks just about perfect. 
take a little more off on this side here. Yeah, there we go. Now it's getting there. Now you see the look I'm going for, guys. But like I said, I'm still going to take off a little more inside of here. Gorgeous, huh? These uh, sanding blocks really work great. Isn't that awesome? Like I said, that dark stain really uh, really helps out a lot. Start with the corners or the edges. Knock the paint off the edges. But now, see, I don't want to use a uh, electric sander because it's going to take too much off. And you can keep doing this as hard or as light as you want. Look at that. That's just about perfect for me. One more side of the flat side here. Once again, I start with the edges, knock them down. Make sure you do it all the way around, all of the edges. And then you can start long ways. Now remember, you don't want this perfect at all. Some's gonna have more wear than other. That looks great. And now on these curvy pieces, that's where I uh, try and use some of this scrap here. And I actually just stick it on there, wrap it around, squeeze it tight, and then just turn it. Let the sandpaper do the work for you. All you're doing is turning it. And look at that. Doesn't that look great? It took just enough off to make it look, you know, old and worn. Now I'll go in here and all these little grooves too and wipe just a little bit. See how it's just barely coming off in there. Once again, I'm using the uh, sanding pad. And there we go, there's the top of it. And I think that's just about perfect. Now, I'll do the same down here. Every edge I will break with this uh, with the sanding pad. And then if it's curved, I use the paper. So, see how some of it comes off more than the other, which is perfect. That's exactly what you want. And there we go. Now, like I said, once again, get in here on the inside. Kind of break that paper. Let the paper do the work. There we go. Now, once again, for the big rounded parts, I'm gonna do the same thing with the sandpaper, let it do the work, grab it on there, and spin. <laughs> awesome, huh? edges or roundovers just take your block and go around it break that bottom edge too oh yeah we're definitely getting there I think I might take a little bit more off on the actual leg here once again with the sandpaper I think my sandpaper is a little too warm. Maybe I'll try the block on this one just for a little bit on the fine grit. Break some of the heavy stuff off. Even when it's not breaking the paint off, it's actually thinning out the paint so you can see more of the brown stain underneath. And that, that's a good thing, that's what you want. But even so far, here's what we got, guys. 
that compared to the painted leg. But I'm actually gonna get a little more sandpaper on this one, just to age it a little bit more. But yeah, before and after here, I think that looks pretty good. Wear out a little more right here. Yeah, I let this one dry up a little bit longer than I usually do. But, no big deal. We'll just use the sanding block on it. I'm actually gonna bring it down a little bit from this top ring too. Mm -hmm. But remember, you gotta hit every area because if you leave these dull spots like this and some heavily painted white spots, it will look like crap and it'll look like you just did it all by hand. So you still want to wear down the paint a little bit. Even spots that don't break the paint off, still wear it down a little bit. There we go. That's exactly what I'm looking for, just like that. Do a little bit more down here. Got some more sandpaper here. There we go. So right there, guys. I think that's about the finished product there for the leg. Hopefully I'm fitting this all on the screen here. But as you can see, the white painted now to the very nice rustic looking. Like I said, this is going on a rustic farmhouse style coffee table. So I think that's perfect. Between the sanding block and the sandpaper, don't let the white paint dry all the way. That's kind of like the, the big thing here. Let it just barely set up so you can knock the paint off pretty easily. And then I'll come back again with some of that either 400 or 800 grit sandpaper and sand everything real smooth and fine to the touch. So I'm going to go ahead, guys, and finish up the rest of the legs and some of the frame here as well. And we'll see what it looks like all put together. And uh, see here with the straight pieces, they're, they're fairly easy to do. I start knocking off on the edges and all around, just like the other ones. You know what I mean? Really break the paint off on the corners and all the edges. And then you get that old look to it, that old rustic farmhouse look to it. Where it looks like, you know, the paint is slowly fading away. Not just breaking off in chunks or anything like that. I'll show you here what I mean. See? Nice clean corner there. And we'll just take it and break the edge off. Because that's how paint actually, you know, falls away. The edges and the corners have the least amount of paint on them, so they're the easiest, you know. You see that there? That's just about right. Now, that's about as heavy as I'm going to take off on the corners, and I'll go a little bit lighter throughout the entire board, just kind of fade it in. perfectly aged board. Looks like it's been sitting out in the weather for about 50 years. Nice. Very cool technique. I love doing it this way, guys. Well, here's the frame, guys. Nice rustic farmhouse frame. So far. Still got to put the uh, center pieces in and some more uh, braces and stuff like that. But just to give you an idea of what the finished uh, product will look like. Well, the frame anyway. But yeah, so there is my uh, technique, guys. I hope you like it.